Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm an American that has been living in Sweden for the past four years. Now I recently posted a video on my TikTok account comparing the average salaries in various countries where Spain, the average salary came in for a teacher to be around $35,000 a year. In Sweden, that number goes up to about $49,000 a year. And in America, that number is normally in the mid $60,000 per year. So the American teachers on average in terms of the salary is highest out of the three countries that I looked at in this comparison. With that being said, having lived in both America and Sweden, I tend to think that the standard of living and quality of living seems to be just a little bit higher in Sweden when compared to America. But on paper, the American teachers are making more money. And I'm trying to reflect on why is it that it's this way? And there was a lot of people commenting in the comment section, but it was very obvious that the people commenting in the comment section had no idea what they were talking about. And I wanted to address some of these comments with you guys and make this video on this subject. Now, the first comment that came up quite frequently in the comment section is that there's no way that Swedish teachers make $49,000 a month. Well, in America, when we say salary, we're referring to yearly salary. And oftentimes in Sweden, in fact, almost all the time when people are talking about their salary, they're talking about how much money people make per month. But just for the comparison to make it seamless, for all three countries that I was comparing, I put it in yearly salary and also did the exchange rate. So why is it that on paper, teachers in America are making more money, but they don't necessarily seem to be way further ahead in terms of like quality of life? There was a frequent comment that came up on this TikTok that, oh, in America, everybody has to pay for their own insurance, which is a ton of money. And in Sweden, everybody is covered by the communal healthcare that they have here in this country. Now, while that is true that everybody is covered by healthcare in Sweden, in America, pretty much any teacher that is employed by a public school or pretty much any teacher in general is gonna have a very, very generous healthcare plan. Both of my parents are teachers and I did my master's in teaching and student teaching in America. So I have a very good knowledge of how the system works there. And because both my parents were teachers, we had amazing healthcare for the entire family until the kids were of the age of 26. So that included health care for everybody, a really, really quality health care plan. Also dental was covered for life and then up for the kids up until age 26 as well. And then very, very good vision coverage. Pretty much all of the insurance needs were taken care of. And that was in addition to the salary. There's this misconception that everybody in America has to pay for their own health insurance, but it's pretty much if you're self-employed or unemployed, you have to pay for your own healthcare insurance. But if you have a job with an employer or if you're working in the public sector, like a teacher or a nurse, you're gonna get that coverage through your job and that's not an extra expense that you're gonna be paying in addition because normally your employer will take care of that. But based on that comment section, it seemed like a lot of people in Sweden were very, very confused about how this works. Now, if I were to compare the systems in Sweden and America, on the one hand, I really do like the system in Sweden because even if you are unemployed, you still have the right and access to get quality healthcare. Whereas in America, you need to have a job to have your employer kind of cover that. And a lot of people might be like less prone to take risks and start their own business and venture out on their own. Whereas in Sweden, maybe more people are likely to start their own business because they know that they don't need to be employed to still get the benefits of a free healthcare system. Another comment that I saw a lot on this TikTok is that, oh, American teachers are literally risking their lives because there's so many school shootings in America and therefore are paid more because of that. I think that was just sort of a ridiculous comment because if you look at the actual numbers, the risk of being in actual danger from a school shooting is so low in America, even though school shootings happen a lot more in America than they do here in Sweden. If you look at the numbers, over the last 10 years in America, there was 36 deaths per year on average from school shootings. But then you look at the total number of students and teachers, if you add up all the students and teachers and personnel, there is about 60 million people that are in schools every single day in America. So that means in any given year, you have a one in two million chance of dying in a school shooting. So I don't think teachers are necessarily getting paid a lot more in America because they're risking their lives. Yes, it's very unfortunate that there are so many school shootings 
And I definitely think that it is a problem that we should continue to have more common sense gun laws and these types of things to try to minimize that as much as possible. Now there's debates on both sides of the political spectrum of how to best handle this issue. If it's a mental health problem, if it's too many guns, it's probably some sort of combination of both in my opinion, but I'm not here to get political on you guys. I can definitely see both sides of the argument. I think that if you just look at the numbers in Europe, there are a lot less issues with gun violence in schools, at least per capita. So I think doing some things and, and finding that commonplace and finding that balance could be a good thing for the US. But of course, both sides, they don't wanna give an inch on this issue because they feel like if they give any sort of ground whatsoever, it's just gonna lead to the other side sort of taking over. But if we compare the numbers of violence in schools in America to in Sweden, well actually in the past 10 years in Sweden, there was one attack, which was not with a gun, it was with a sword and there was three deaths from that attack. So in the past 10 years in Sweden, there was three deaths versus the over 300 in America. But still, if you look at the odds of dying as somebody in a school in Sweden and you extrapolate the numbers out and take into account the much smaller population in Sweden, you have a 0.3 in 2 million chance of dying in a school. So you have a three times greater chance in America of dying from violence in school from either a gun or knives or these sorts of things versus in Sweden, you have one third less chance. But there still is a chance of being in danger in whatever country you are in because there's crazy people in every country. So based on what we've talked about so far, I don't think teachers are paid more because they have to cover their own insurance because most teachers are covered by their employer's insurance. And they're probably not paid more because they have a higher chance of, of dying on the job. So why is it that Swedish teachers enjoy such a high quality of life even though they're paid less? Well, one factor that might contribute to this is the cost of universities. Now, to get a professional position in America, normally the professional positions where you are required to have a college degree in America are paid more if you compare those same positions to the people that are working those positions in Sweden. Now, if you have to pay a ton of money for college, you're gonna rack up student debt, at least for a lot of people. So they're gonna have to pay down those loans afterwards. So I know a lot of my friends or people that graduated from college, they might have graduated from college with $100,000 plus of student loan debt that they have to pay off once they start working. So to put that into perspective, that's like close to a million Swedish crowns that people are actually in debt. So having that higher salary, a lot of that might be going to paying off for their actual education. For a brief period of time in college, I was actually considering going into the medical school route and trying to become a doctor because I loved my anatomy and physiology classes in college. But when I really started to look at the numbers and the cost of four years of college plus four years of medical school, and then having to also do some internship years and stuff before actually making the real good money as a doctor, I wouldn't have actually paid off of my student loans until like the age of 40, which was really kind of freaky to me and ultimately a big reason why I decided not to go into the medical school career. Try telling a 19, 20 year old guy that you're gonna be in student loan debt until you're 40 if you choose this career path. Sure now, American doctors make a ton of money and a lot more than their equivalent counterparts in Sweden, but that is a huge commitment and if at some point along that way that you decide this isn't the career that you want to do you're in a very very sticky situation the other reason why i think less money goes further in sweden is that just the general lifestyles are different this was another interesting statistic out of a thousand people living in sweden there was only 479 cars versus in america for a thousand people there was 816 so almost twice as many people have cars in America and it really highlights the fact that you really need a car because the public transportation isn't as good. You need a car to get around. And if you have to have a car in addition to your place of living, that's adding a huge expense. And most American families that I know have two cars. So you're adding in insurance for that, gas, all the costs of, of buying new cars and upkeep and maintenance that's a huge portion of people's salaries as well. Whereas in Sweden, much less people are driving on a day-to-day -day basis. Another factor that could contribute to this is rent prices. Now I live in Stockholm, which is not known for having cheap rent. In fact, in Sweden, it's by far the highest rent, especially if you wanna live in the city center in Stockholm. But if you go outside of Stockholm and you're living in a smaller town or a smaller city in Sweden, rent is extremely reasonable and you can find a one bedroom apartment for like four or $500 
which might be very, very difficult in a lot of places in the US. If you look at all of the major cities, in fact, where I'm from, Portland, the average cost of rent for me would be like $1,500 to $2,000 as well. So rent prices in America can potentially be much higher than the rent prices in Sweden, but of course, you have to take into account what cities you're in, what parts of the country you're in, because that's gonna be the biggest factor. But the last factor that I wanna touch on is just the general difference in lifestyle in America and Sweden. Now, in Sweden, it seems like people are just a little bit more relaxed and content with what they have. Whereas America sort of has this hustle culture and people are trying to more keep up with the Joneses and, and get the next new thing all the time and, and have a big house and more space and, and 2.5 kids and, and all of these things. The lifestyle in America, people are just hustling. They're working hard and they're trying to get the new thing. And I think when you're in this sort of society where you're never content with what you're having and you're always trying to push and compete and get the next thing, even if you're making more money, you're gonna be less content with your life. I think Swedish people are just generally more content with what they have, and I think that is a major reason why people in Scandinavian countries typically rank towards the highest of happiest countries in the world, which I've already made a video about on the channel. And the very last comment I wanna to respond to in regards to this TikTok is that it was also saying that, oh, teachers in America, they have to buy their own supplies for the students in their classes. This is not typically something that I experienced being a teacher in America. I think there are a lot of teachers that do do this, especially if their kids are at the elementary school level. But for me, being a high school teacher, working with PE, we always had good PE budgets to buy all the equipment that we needed for our students. So I was never like taking money out of my own personal salary or something like that to pay for my students, and I don't think this is something that my parents did either. And it's definitely not something that is expected of the teachers, but this might be different based on where you're teaching in America and, and the culture. But as far as what I've seen, that wasn't the case. So I just wanted to throw this point and respond to this comment here at the end of the video. With that being said, guys, I hope you found this video interesting and I, and I hope you didn't mind me addressing some of what I feel like are some major misconceptions of what people think about life in America, having not actually lived there and experienced it themselves. But yeah, I'm just trying to give you guys all of the interesting insights that I spend my time thinking about here on this channel. So if you find this type of content interesting, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get more videos like this. And with that being said, I will see you in another video.